Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the C-Man. Now I want to welcome you to another edition of the C-Man's Cinema Sit Down. Now, I'm sure I've said this at some point on this channel, but I'm a massive Spike Lee fan, man. And it goes all the way back to the early teenage days of, you know, little C-Man before he was the C-Man. <laughs> and uh, a movie called He Got Game. I was a basketball player back in the day, so a basketball movie immediately piqued my interest. Denzel Washington, even by the time I was 12, 13 years old, was already one of my favorite actors ever. Um, and Ray Allen was one of my favorite ball players. Uh, you know, I was a big Ray Allen fan because I was a jump shooter myself. Um, and just seeing that combination, I was like, I gotta see this movie. I had to beg my parents to let me watch He Got Game because I was not old enough to see a rated R movie. Um, and they may have regretted letting me watch it because there is some uh, explicitly sexual content in that movie. Um, but I certainly was super glad, not because of the explicit sexual content, because the movie is just phenomenal, and it made me fall in love with Spike Lee right then. I mean, I just dove into the catalog after that, man, whether it was things from back in the day, like Mo Betta Blues, uh, you, you know, Do the Right Thing, like, just loved everything he did, and then going forward, anytime he dropped a movie, I was at that theater, man. Inside Man, phenomenal. Uh, Black Klansman, obviously, phenomenal. Um, I guess there's a little bit of a trend with my favorite Spike Lee movies. They have Washingtons in them. Denzel and John David are just phenomenal i'm so glad john david is as good as he is um because it's a big, big big shadow to step out of um, denzel um but yeah it was just like a match made in heaven for me because he's a, a wonderful filmmaker i love the way he shoots his movies i mean those sh like just things that immediately you think of like when, when a guy is standing still and is moving without moving um, like shots like that, like just those are kind of things as a filmmaker that he does um, that made me fall in love with the art of filmmaking. Um, but then his storytelling is just genius. And as a white male in America, I don't know a lot, you know, about the black. St I mean, I know about it, but like to live it, I, I don't know anything about that. And, and those Spike Lee movies, man, they just they, they put black culture on display in ways that like make you appreciate the things. I love the way he talks about culture or racial inequality and, and all of those things just work. And his newest movie, this uh, Spike Lee Netflix joint certainly touches on all of those things. And Spike Lee, no shock, absolutely crushes. What am I talking about? Why don't you pull up a chair, man? Take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in spoiler free into the five bloods um now if you were unfamiliar with the five bloods uh is a movie about four black vietnam vets who go back to vietnam to reclaim uh the remains of their fallen commander um who was left behind and also reclaim the remains of some gold they buried out there um so it's this really kind of interesting reunion uh like vietnam war movie mixed with this treasure hunt um and it's just wonderful, man. Like, I loved watching Spike Lee play in the Vietnam era. It was the thing that I, I was so excited about. And what was really cool is he doesn't just play in the Vietnam era. He plays in present-day Vietnam. So you get to kind of see the, the differences between the two and also some of the similarities and the way people were affected by Vietnam there as well as, you know, with our characters. Um and, you know, uh, the characters' names, of course, are Paul, Otis, Eddie, and Melvin. Um, and I love, like, watching these guys on camera. Uh, they're played by Delroy Lindo, uh, Clark Peters, Norm Lewis, and Isaiah Whitlock Jr. Um, and it's just wonderful, man. Like, from the moment the movie starts and they kind of run into each other at the airport for the first time, clearly in a long time, it feels like this big reunion of, like, brothers or family members who hadn't seen each other in a long time. And it's so enjoyable to watch because it felt like for some of these guys, it was probably just awesome to be in a movie all together, you know, and just the, that excitement. Um, you feel it right from the beginning. Now the beginning is a little rocky. Um, I thought tonally it took spike a minute to find that groove. Um, but even in that kind of wonky zone, he does wonderful things. Like when they first all see each other, uh, when they leave a restaurant one night and there's this kind of kid who keeps coming into their conversations, he's kind of like, like something happens with him outside that kind of plays into like PTSD type stuff. And it's not like violent or anything. It's kind of funny, but like you understand immediately um, like that war does not leave soldiers and Vietnam specifically 
um, you know, just so many haunting stories uh, about people who came home from Vietnam because of what they had to see and do out there. And then the way they were treated when they came home was just so terrible. Um, and, and Spike plays with that stuff early. And there are moments like those moments that work really well. Um, but it takes him a minute to get his footing. Um, but once he finds his groove, it's pretty much once they kind of leave, start to leave to head out like on their, their trip. Um, that's where like the movie really clicks in and just takes off from there, man. It's genius, man. Like from, from the subject matter that, that spikes dealing with, I, I love he, the constantly playing with dichotomy of different things. You know, uh, Delroy Lindo's character, Paul, um, has a son played by Jonathan majors named David who kind of like hijacks the trip to a degree. Cause, uh, Delroy Lindo's character is, is the one probably dealing with the worst, uh, effects of PTSD. So he kind of comes out cause he, he's worried about him. Um, but also knows what they're going to try to do to go find this gold. Um, so there's this kind of back and forth with them. That's really interesting, but also plays into the overall story because, you know, Spike goes back to Vietnam, um, and, and, you know, shows their commander storm and Norman played by Chadwick Boseman. Um, so when David shows up, it balances the movie. There's there's this balance always at work, man. So whether it's having to add in a fifth member to balance out the storytelling of the actual fifth member, um, just the story of the Vietnam stuff, you know, uh, Spike does a wonderful job at the beginning of the movie going back and forth between what was going on in Vietnam and what was going on on the home front, specifically from the black perspective. Um, you know, it, it, the, the I don't know, don't quote me on the numbers, but it's something, I think he puts it in the movie, but it was something like, eight or 12 percent of the population at the time was black but like 22 percent plus um of the soldiers in vietnam were black um so that story is very uh, you know relevant you know specifically the black story and that's something that you don't really see on screen a lot um so to dive into that is really interesting but to balance it with what was going on at home because there was all sorts of you know civil rights movement stuff going on at the time so he does this wonderful thing where he goes back and forth with that stuff too and like the way that not only does he balance it out with what was happening but he highlights super prominent figures uh you know at that time and i love the way he highlights whether they were athletes or or, or civil rights movement leaders or just the way he plays with it. and the people that he brings up man not necessarily names that you're familiar with love when spike does that stuff but the way it, it's a balancing act, the whole movie, and I think he does it perfectly. Like I love watching him deal with the actual Vietnam stuff and, and dealing with the stuff during present day and how Vietnam has changed and how the culture, specifically, you know, if you are someone an American coming back to Vietnam or vice versa, um, and you're from that era, the way that stuff plays I, and just the Vietnam culture in general, um, I just love the way he played with all of it, you know, and, and including the PTSD stuff. Um, the fact that like there were a lot of bastard children in Vietnam because soldiers would sleep with women and then go back home and not even know they had kids. Um, he just layers the movie in a way where he hits on everything he wants to talk about and even pulls it into present day stuff where there's a Black Lives Matter scene in the movie that's completely relevant. It makes a ton of sense. And this is all before George Floyd happened. Um, you know, it's one of those unfortunate things about Spike Lee movies is that they're so relevant no matter when he makes them or where he sets them or what story he's trying to tell because a lot of the systematic racism stuff doesn't go away, man. And, you know, it's the way he tells those stories. It just always has an impactful feel, you know, it just hits you. And he's so good at it. And everything that he wants you to take away from this movie, I thought he nailed now, the movie's not all about Spike Lee, even though I can talk about Spike Lee and the way he made this movie for days. This cast is tremendous. Now, for me personally, Delroy Lindo, Clark Peters, and Isaiah Whitlock Jr., three guys like I grew up watching on TV or in the movies. Um, we just see them pop up in small roles here and there, but I mean specifically Clark Peters and Isaiah Whitlock Jr., like part of my one of my favorite shows of all time in The Wire. Um, you know, like th they just played you know characters that weren't necessarily on screen together a lot but i mean you know whether it's you know whether it's you know clark peters you know being you know lester freeman or isaiah whitlock jr of course uh being senator 
Clay Davis. Um, you know, it, it was just fun to like, you know, see this group, specifically those three guys who were guys I watched growing up. Uh, and then Norm Lewis, who I, I really hadn't seen in anything prior to this, the way he fit into the group, it just felt natural. Um, and what was fun was to just watch these guys on screen. It felt like a group of guys who, you know, came up, you know, in and around the same time in certain elements, specifically Lindo, uh, Peters and Whitlock Jr. And, and maybe didn't get to work all together. So like, it, I don't, there was just this energy that like went past the characters. Um, and I loved watching that stuff. And I loved the brotherhood and the camaraderie of the group as a whole. Um, and just watching them on camera. Now, when you get into the actual characters, Delroy Lindo, I think, is the most interesting character in the movie. Uh, he's the one who's clearly affected by PTSD the most. Um, and the way they handle that and his performance, it is so emotional uh, and raw at times. And it's just, it feels so spot on, like the swing, specifically when you're talking about his son. Like the way he'll go from talking about his son like he never wanted him to like, I love you so much, like I'm glad that you showed up type of stuff the swings he just nails all that and where he is mentally is you know a little shaky and lindo just nails that stuff and he's he's the character in the movie i think that pops the most um along with jonathan majors i really liked what majors did as his son and how that relationship works and like i said he helps balance that group out very much like chadwick boseman does Anytime you go back to Vietnam, that's one of the other things too, from a filmmaking uh, perspective, I loved watching Spike, you know, do stuff with iconic Vietnam imagery. I loved how he would go back to Vietnam and come to your square ratio and go back out to widescreen. There are times it happens and you don't even pick up on it happening. You're like, Oh wait, when do we go to the square? Um, like all that stuff worked, but the, like there's an interesting bit, like the way Chadwick Boseman's character and Jonathan Major's character play into the movie um, the similarities between the characters and specifically play into Delroy Lindo's characters, Paul's story. Um, I just love that stuff. And I thought Chad and, and Jonathan Majors just crushed the stuff they were given. Like you bought, and there's another cool thing that, that kind of highlight the fact like Chad's a lot younger. Um, so he seems a lot younger as a leader, but the way he commands that group is, is just awesome. Um, but there's a really interesting thing that Spike does that allows you to use the same actors the whole movie. I'm not going to spoil what it is, but how he plays it, I thought was perfect. Like absolutely perfect. And it makes sense. The reason, like what happens and how he does it makes sense based on the way he's telling the story. I just thought it was a wonderful thing to do. I allows you to keep these four guys in the movie the whole time. Um, but yeah, majors fantastic as uh, Lindo's son and, uh, Bat Bozeman, fantastic as their commander. I just, just so, so good. Um, and then Norm Lewis, I didn't really know a lot of going into it, but I thought he meshed quite well with the group, um, you know, adds elements to his story. He's more of a minor supporting role character than the other guys. Um, but when he's on screen, like I said, the group feels like it needs to be together. Um, and I thought Norm Lewis did a really good job. And then Probably the thing I loved to watch the most was Clark Peters and, and Isaiah Whitlock Jr. Just being on screen together, man. And, and the fact that they both came from The Wire, there may be a reference or two to The Wire, or nods to The Wire that made me squeal. I, I like yelled and cheered. I was like, yes, I love that stuff. Um, but I just loved watching them because Whitlock Jr. is dialed up a whole lot. It's like he's the guy who went to the booze and the party in post-Vietnam and is still stuck in that kind of life, living this kind of bachelor life. And then uh, Clark Peters, Zotus, is definitely, this feels like the smartest in the group, the most put together, the one that's kind of the commander, so to speak, without, you know, uh, you know Storm and Norman around. Um, and I, he, he's the more level-headed of everybody. Um, and then also kind of another element of his story that ties into the Vietnam stuff I thought played really well. Um, and I just, and like I said, I just enjoyed watching this group on screen. And the material that Spike gives them, it's just so good. You just, it ends up being a movie that gets knocked out of the park. And there's more people, man. Uh, Melanie Thierry, Paul Walter Hauser, and Jasper uh, Pakenham. Little small parts, um, but they're kind of like this charity group that goes and finds mines that were still active out in the, like, the, the, the woods and stuff. Uh, in the jungles, rather, <laughs> in Vietnam. Um, so they kind of cross paths uh, with the guys. And, you know, it's a smaller bit of the movie, but they play in heavily to the third act. And I thought they all brought stuff, and I just 
I'm personally a big fan of Paul Walter Hauser. I don't know what it is. And his character's got a little bit more range than some of the things that we've seen him in before um, to where it was like, okay, we're not totally typecasting this guy. And I just love when he pops up on screen. But they all kind of add something. Uh, Jasper Packenden specifically, he he big swings like with his character. His character's real big. Um, and I, I, I like what like what he brings to it. So like it's a nice little injection of energy when they show up, uh, and they all do a really good job as well. So that's not even other man. As some of the other cast members, um, you know, anybody that pops up in the movie just adds and kind of lifts and supports the main group. And Spike is so good. Like Spike's so good at doing that stuff that it was no surprise to me that I thought he knocked this one out of the park. Um, I really, really dug uh, the Five Bloods, and like I said, just cool to see Spike tackle a time period that ends up being so relevant to to the, to where we are now um but also from a cinematic standpoint getting to see him play with some of that iconic stuff we've never seen him play with um all of those things i just thought worked and just really a wonderful movie so there you go man there's, there's c man's long winded non-spoiler uh review on the five bloods big fan if you haven't seen it, it's on netflix go check it out um that's all i gotta say now i want to know what you're thinking um did you see the five bloods what did you like about it um what did you think as far as all of the balancing acts and things that spike had going on what did you think of the performances what did you think of the subject matter and you know from the vietnam to you know the the black lives matter movement stuff anything that spike was playing with how did you think it played did it mesh was he able did you think he pulled off all these layers of things he layered in there did they all blend together for you uh, as much as it did for me anything you're thinking good or bad uh, about uh the five bloods goes down below um if you haven't seen it did we entice you to you want to check it out hopefully you do um but anything you got can go down below in the comments look forward to talking to you down there as always if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and if you're new you want to come hang out with the old c-man anytime we're talking about movies um and you want to show a little love and support jump over there man hit that subscribe button hit that little bell if you want those alerts and until next time for the c-man's cinema sit down i'm the c-man i'm signing off peace well I'll be. You guys are still here. You must be looking for some more content. Well, don't worry. C-Man's got you covered, man. You got videos like this guy and this guy. And if you haven't yet and you want to come check out all the C-Man goodies, join the Cinema Sit Down Squad, man. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell down below that, too, so you can get alerts every time I make new videos.